Hi, everybody. Happy Thursday. This is Jen Ochnen, and I am your former Run on Duncan gal uh, turned certified integrative health practitioner. And I'm here bringing you 30 days of LinkedIn Lives. And today is episode number nine. I'm so excited. So the last three days, um, we have been digging into body detoxicity, body toxicity. And this is a really big component, like a pillar, a principle, uh, a big boulder, if you will, uh, that I focus on in my program because it's absolutely critical when ladies come to me and they say, hey, Jen, I, I really want to lose weight and I want to feel better. That's really the most common thing that women come to me for. And when you focus on body toxicity, understanding how you get toxic, how to avoid it, and how to remove it, things just really start to fall into place. But today, I want to shift gears um, because if you have seen my bio, you know that I help create results for women, focusing on women 40 plus, help them lose weight, balance their hormones, manage the crazies, and do all this so they can feel healthy, sexy, strong, and confident. So today we're going to switch gears and we're going to go back to talking about hormones. And we're going to talk about one hormone in particular, okay? We're going to talk about insulin. And you might not have ever thought about insulin as a hormone. You probably just thought about estrogen and testosterone and all the others, but not really thinking about insulin as a hormone, but it is. And when you think about our hormones overall, they manage all the metabolic processes in our body, okay, all of them. So our hormones all together, when they're working well, it's like this beautiful symphony, right? Our body's a miracle and all our hormones together are this beautiful symphony making beautiful music, but everything is related, right? So if one is out of whack, what happens? It's like the horn section going crazy, right? Um, then it's a big ear cringing mess, right? So today we're going to talk about insulin and we're going to talk about it in relation to blood sugar management. Okay. Um, why should we care about blood sugar management? Well, Managing your blood sugar is critical to your overall health, um, to being at a healthy weight, um, to being at a healthy body composition, and to really stave off or alleviate or remove risks associated with the big three causes of death, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, still the big three. And the great thing about understanding blood sugar management is that you can control so much about it. There are so many levers that you can pull to make an impact, to help manage that blood sugar, to help increase the sensitivity of your insulin so that you can be healthy and avoid those things. Again, all kinds of things. Blood sugar is a complex issue. Our bodies are complex, but some of this can be made really simple in terms of what we need to understand, right? We don't all need to be scientists or, or whatnot to figure this thing out. So super, super important. So again, you hear about insulin, you hear about this a lot in podcasts and on social media um, related to, let's say, Insulin, blood sugar, high blood sugar, low blood sugar, diabetes, type one, type two, it, and it's all kind of related together. So what I want to do is I want to talk about, you know, what really happens in the part, what, what's the function of insulin, this really critical hormone in our body? How does it work, right? What are some of the maybe common myths about it? And then five ways that you can impact your blood sugar health all on your own, super simply. Okay. So that's what we are going to talk about today for the next, I guess, 25 minutes. So when, so let's start with eating, right? You eat, you eat food, food are calories. Calories are a form of energy, right? So our body needs this energy and its favorite form of energy is glucose. 
Glucose is just another way to talk about blood sugar. It's a simple sugar in our body, and it's the body's preferential um, preferential type of fuel. So specifically, it's going to be breaking down carbohydrates to get that energy. Your liver actually also acts as a store for carbohydrates that the body can draw on in times of stress and need. But really, I mean, the main all source is eating. So our body are all metabolic processes, right, that uses this what we call like an insulin pathway to break down that food, break down those carbs into simple sugar, glucose, which then is used by our cells as energy. Now, insulin plays a role in this because insulin is basically like the key that unlocks the door to your cells to make sure that it can properly utilize glucose for energy. And just like your car or your apartment or your townhouse or your home, what happens when you don't have the key? That door doesn't open and you're stuck on the outside. So when we hear about the concept of basically insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity, what we're talking about is the fact that insulin, the lock's broken, the fob is off, it's misprogrammed, whatever. But that glucose, that fuel source, that simple sugar can't get into the cells and be utilized for energy. Not good, right? So insulin resistance, of course, can die, develop into type 2 diabetes. So let's take a second and talk about diabetes. Okay, so there's two types, right? Type 1 diabetes is generally genetic inherited. And this is when your body can't produce insulin or is not producing enough insulin. So insulin, of course, that key to regulating the amount of blood sugar that is going into our cells. If you don't have it, you can crash and have low blood sugar, high blood sugar. So I had a friend, um, a friend from grammar school, whatever, and we reconnected about 10 years ago when I first started coaching her. And she, um, she didn't realize it when she was so sick growing up, but she always, she had type one diabetes. She had to wear an insulin pump and an insulin monitor. And she had to make sure she was always testing and checking her blood sugar to make sure she was feeling good. Type one is, you know, it can be very dangerous, right? Women can die from mismanaging and having mismanaged blood sugar. Okay. So that's type one. Type two diabetes is what we're really hearing about now because as more and more people become insulin resistant, they are developing type 2 diabetes. And we are seeing this happen at a younger and younger age, right? We get kids as young as eight and nine years old who are developing type 2 diabetes. It's really scary. And so type 2 diabetes develops when you're looking at, you know, lifestyle factors. You know, we're talking about your diet right? A lot of people are on that sad diet, standard American diet. Exercise, big contributing factor. And stress is a big contributing factor here, okay? So all those things can contribute to blood sugar mismanagement that leads to insulin resistance. Insulin is basically just getting overwhelmed and being like, oh my gosh, I cannot handle these blood sugar spikes anymore. Hey, Kathleen, thanks for joining can't have these blood sugar spikes anymore. And it basically kind of gives up. It's like, I'm, pff, something's wrong. Not, not happening. So when that happens, you have all this excess glucose in our bloodstream. And it really doesn't have any place to go except be stored as fat. Okay. So when we think about the act of eating, the act of our body breaking down food, specifically carbohydrates into energy, that simple sugar glucose, glucose insulin is the transporter, that lock that's getting that sugar into our cells for energy. Okay. Now, one thing I want to say is that um, spikes, like how do you know if your blood sugar is spiking? Let's think about, you know, if your cravings, are a good indication. If you're craving a lot of sugary things, that's a good indication that you're having, you have blood sugar spikes, right? Um, if you, have you ever like woken up like super early in the morning for something, maybe you have a appointment or a trip or whatever, and you're just ravenously hungry. Mm, 
sleep and sleeping, the act of sleeping um, is in critical in terms of managing our blood sugar. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But these spikes in blood sugar are the things that we need to manage. Now, your blood sugar rising and falling is not a bad thing. Okay. Um, two other hormones play a role in this. Grenlin, grr, grenlin, I'm hungry. That's our hunger hormone signals that we're hungry. And then we have leptin that singles signals when we're full. So blood sugar spikes tend to, when they're off, when the insulin resistance is off, that's why oftentimes you might see people having difficulty where they say they're always hungry. They're always hungry. Or, um, you know, they just, they're, they're always snacking. They always want something sweet. And then obviously, the, you know, a lot of these women are having problems with weight loss, right? So, okay, so we talked about insulin. Everybody clear on insulin, right? Insulin, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Okay, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'll try and answer them either during the live or after live too, especially if you're watching this on replay. So hey, if you're watching this on replay, um, original date that I'm doing this, it is August 24th. It's a beautiful day here in Atlanta, super, super hot. Um, but say hi to me and put hashtag replay in the comments if you're watching it after the fact. So now I want to talk about just something that kind of I don't want to get into this debate about keto or, you know, what the best diet is or anything like that. All I want to say is that there seems to be a lot of chatter out there in social media. Um, we've always kind of heard the chatter that carbs are bad, right? I want to lose up. Carbs are bad. I don't eat carbs. Jen, I don't eat carbs. So when women say that to me, I always say, okay, well, tell me a little bit more about that because I'm not sure what that really means. Then they'll say to me, well, I don't eat bread. I don't eat pasta or anything. I said, okay, so you don't eat starches. Right. Okay. So what about fruits and vegetables? I said, well, of course I eat fruits and vegetables. So let's just clarify. Fruits and vegetables are carbs. <laughs> okay. Fruits and vegetables are carbs. So what we're really talking about when we say people say they're not eating carbs, a lot of times is saying they're just trying to pick and choose amongst their carbohydrates. And a lot of times they're just trying to avoid the bad ones, which is great. So if I go back to this concept of what the standard American diet is, sad, um, basically lots of inflammatory fats, lots of processed foods, heavily processed foods, and um, lots of packaged foods, right? Things that really have been marketed I don't even know some of them. I wouldn't even call them food, right? They're marketed food products <laughs> that make us want to buy and eat more of them. Okay. So having a healthy blood sugar means definitely managing your carbs, but also making sure that you're eating a lot of the other great macros that we need, right? Having enough protein, fat, and fiber to make sure that we're feeling full. Okay. So carbs are getting and have continually gotten this super bad rap about not eating any carbs. But remember what I said, glucose, simple sugar comes from carbohydrates. It's our body's main fuel source. Okay. It's our main food for our brains. If you want to be successful at work and successful in your career, you best make sure you're feeding your brain people, right? You can tell, you can say all, all day you want. Ketones are good. Yes. We can burn fat for fuel. Yes. I can become fat adapted. Yes. But you still need carbs. And if you are picking the right carbs and incorporating them in a smart way into your lifestyle, I just, I, I could not in good conscience, if a woman comes to me and says she wants to lose weight, I would never say to her that you just have to cut out all carbs. I'm a foodie. I love food. My husband and I love to go out and eat. We get to travel all over the world. One of our favorite things is going to all these amazing restaurants, right? My, my 50th birthday trip that's coming up in October going to be 50, 15 fabulous. We're going to Austria. We're going back. We've gone before around New Year's and Christmas time, but we're going in the fall. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to be in Vienna. We're going to be in Salzburg. We'll be hiking in the mountains, taking the Sound of Music tour. I'm so excited about this, but I'm already looking at restaurants. I've already booked three reservations, right? I'm a foodie. So again, I would never tell a woman coming to me, to stop eating carbs. And that's the way to a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I'm sorry. It's just not. I'll never believe that. I'll never believe that. Now, insulin is getting a bad rap too, saying, well, insulin is bad for you because it causes you to get fat. Let's take that into a little bit of context. Yes, I just explained that 
If you have insulin resistance, that can cause excess glucose to be in your bloodstream and it's not being used by your cells because it can't necessarily get in there or it's not getting in there very effectively and it can be stored as fat. But that's not really insulin's fault, is it? Insulin plays a key role. You want to make sure that energy is getting into your cells. Cellular health, all the mitochondria that's in there, you want to make sure those babies are firing. So don't blame the insulin, okay? And then, of course, there's there's also stories out there. There's weight loss drug or drugs out there, insulin, people taking insulin to lose weight. Okay, so let's kind of, if I can just do my small part here to say, look, carbs are not bad. Fruits and vegetables are carbs. Make smart choices with your carbs. Okay, and I'll talk about that again in a little bit. So um, so let's talk about, uh, let me just check my notes here and see if there's anything. I've never really taught. This is a full module, so I just want to make sure I don't miss anything before I go into the top five reasons on how you can manage your own blood sugar. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so just, just remember, insulin is a hormone. All of our hormones are working together, right? And they, whoop, sorry about that, Kathleen. All of our insulins, are, all, all of our hormones are working together to create a great symphony for how our body works together. And when, if you take it as kind of a macro viewpoint, what we're talking about is your overall metabolic health. How well is your body functioning? What is your body composition at? Do you have plenty of lean, sexy muscle? Are you carrying the right amount of muscle for your frame? Are you basically at the right weight for your frame? How are you feeling? I mean, you don't need to wear a continuous glucose monitor to know that you're having blood sugar swings and cravings because you feel like crap, right? So I just... I just want to remember that. I just want you to remember that again, you don't need to be testing your blood sugar unless of course you have diabetes and you're doing this for your doctor, right? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in generalities, managing your blood sugar, you know, if you're having blood sugar swings, right? If you don't send me a message, we'll talk about it. But you know, if you're feeling crap, you know, if you're craving sugary stuff all the time, that's, that's just a main huge indicator. Okay. So let's get into the five things that you can do yourself. Okay. So number one, the first thing that you can do, and this is definitely what I work on with my clients within Fatigue to Fabulous, my 90-day signature program, is having consistent meal times. Why is this important? If you're having consistent meal times, if you're fueling yourself consistently, and hopefully if you're, you know, you're having the right nutrients, I'll get into that in a minute. But if you're fueling yourself consistently, you're just not eating chaotically. Like one day you don't eat breakfast and then, you know, um, another day, you know, you don't eat until dinner and the next day you just eat breakfast and then you're going out. Just your meal times being all over the place. It's just inconsistent, right? Having your body have consistent fueling, consistent energy that helps your metabolism work effectively so that, you know, calories in or calories out. You have consistent fat burn. You want your metabolic health, your metabolic rate to be very strong right? So it's just basic, consistent meal times. number one. Number two is making sure that you have enough protein, fat, and fiber in your diet. Why? Well, number one, I mean, you're eating these things, they help you stay full longer. If you're just eating a bunch of junk, if you're just eating a bunch of candy and like, you know, and you feel super full and then a half an hour later, an hour later, you're hungry. Well, that's why you just downed a bunch of sugar with nothing in it, nothing to give your body of any substance, of any substance at all to run on. So when you think about blood sugar management, think about eating your proteins, your fats, your fiber, right? Number three, let's talk about carbs again for a second. And I went into this a little bit before, but I got to make sure and cover it. Your quality of carbs are important, right? Fruits and vegetables, eat them. <laughs> There's only one part on the program, really, uh, of my program, where I have people kind of avoid fruits. It's kind of the graduation part of the program where we're doing a functional detox. And it's just for a short period of time, right? Overall, making sure that you have great quality carbs is fantastic. And I'm not ever going to say to somebody, don't have bread, OK, because let's take bread as a great example. Right. There's there's a bunch of different types of bread out there. If you think about 
the most processed white bread you can imagine, right? What is it? It's basically nothing. It's mush, right? Everything's been taken out of it. It's got nutrients in it maybe, but the nutrients, it's, you know, fortified. Excuse me, fortified isn't necessarily bad, but I'd rather have you get nutrients that are coming directly from food, right? So let's think about another choice. Think about like Ezekiel bread, um, Dave's, right? A great brand. Why is that so much better? You've got the grains in there. You've got the shells. You've got the husk. You've got that fiber in there. That fiber, as your body is slowly digesting it, that's the thing that's making it so your blood sugar doesn't spike up, right? Nobody likes a diet roller coaster. Nobody likes a blood sugar roller coaster either, right? So you can see the grains, right? It, it's just so, so important. And then, then the nutrients are naturally occurring in the bread. So there's the bread two different kinds, right? And who doesn't love freaking avocado toast, right? Oh my goodness. Amazing toasted Dave's, some avocado, maybe a beautiful slice of tomato. I love putting everything but the bagel seasoning on it. I mean, just absolutely delicious. So Kathleen, what are you saying? All the celebrities take in Manjura. Okay. I don't even get started about what that's doing to their gut health, but okay. That's another topic. Um, protein, getting in required amount of protein. Kathleen, we've talked about this before, girl. I gave you some great ideas, so we can talk about it again. But women, definitely, especially once you're getting 40, 50 years old, um, you get a really thinking about do not, do not, this is a general statement, but in general, get at least 100 grams of protein a day. If you break that up amongst 30 grams for three meals, right, 30, 30, 30, um, that's 90 grams right there. And then the remaining 10, you know, you're having a snack, okay? So- Super, super uh, good way to think about it. So uh, consistent meal times. Number two, having enough uh, protein, fat, and fiber. Number three, quality carbs. Number four is all about exercise. Exercise is amazing for managing blood sugar. You can, why, right? Think about it. You're using energy, right? So one of the things I always tell my clients who like to do fasting at night as opposed to in the morning is once they finish their dinner around seven o'clock or so, go out for a brisk walk, right? 10, 20 minutes, jump on your bike, pedal while you're watching a little bit of TV or listen to a podcast, whatever you want to do. I'm not talking about a crazy hit workout here. I'm talking about just go and you know, burn some calories, whatever. That will quickly bring your blood sugar back down so you can get more into that fasted state and have the benefits of autophagy, right? We talked about that a lot on Tuesday, all the benefits of autophagy. So, but exercise in general is absolutely fantastic. And strength training in particular is amazing. If you are creating that lean, sexy muscle, right? Which we all want, which helps with skin elasticity, right? Uh, it turns you into a blood sugar management machine. Okay. The more muscle you have, the more effective your metabolism is going to run. And that blood sugar management is part of that. Hey, Jeff, thanks for joining. So, so yes, exercise, exercise, exercise. Um, ladies, once you get to be my age, 49 or, or dealing with hormone issues, maybe, Try to maybe cut down on hit type workouts and really focus more on, you know, walks and strength training, you know, kind of that lower, not that super intense. Oh my gosh, going to do it. Because why? I didn't talk about this earlier, but when I did my master class earlier in the summer, I talked about the three surprising ways that stress sabotages um, your health hormones and libido. When you are in fight or flight, just real quickly, when you are in fight or flight, okay, what's happening? Your HPA axis is activated. So your hypothalamus, your pituitary gland, and your adrenals. And what's it telling you? Oh my gosh, I'm being chased through a bear in the woods. The, the bear in the woods these days is meetings, thousands of emails, multiple phone calls, just the, the stress of modern life, right? So, but our bodies don't differentiate between the bear and the email. Okay, the one's obviously going to eat us. So anywho, so what happens is in fight or flight, our body says, oh my gosh, boom, we're stressed. Cortisol is starting to be produced. Hormones, right? Cortisol is a hormone. Start saying, I need energy for fuel to run. So what's it do? It pushes blood sugar. What does this mean? If you are under chronic stress, like a lot of us are, that means your body is in a chronic fight or flight pattern 
the sympathetic side of our nervous system is always activated and therefore our bodies are always cause, calling for more glucose. And if we're, our asses are in the chair, can I say ass? Our asses are in the chair, right? And we're not out there burning off this energy, not actually running through the woods. What happens? Too much glucose in our system. Insulin starts to give up as a hormone. Says, oh my gosh, I can't handle it all. What happens? All that glucose is stored as fat. It's not the insulin's fault that's causing fat storage. It's the fact that you're chronically stressed. Okay. So again, do your workouts. Hit workouts or stress on the body. If you're already chronically stressed, use your exercise as a way to de-stress because you can have a strength training session and not stress your body out. I'm talking about, I used to do 10 years ago, I used to do HIIT workouts where I, I mean, I would be exhausted laying on the floor afterwards. I can handle that then. I cannot handle that now. That is not good for my hormones. Okay. So the last one is sleep. Sleep will save you. When we sleep, um, specifically, if you uh, Ayurvedic teaches us between like 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. is the times where our systems reset, our hormones reset, our blood sugar stabilizes back to normal around, you know, 100 or a little less, right? Stabilization of blood sugar. Sleep's important. Resets all the systems, okay? And and you know that. time If you have to get up super early, when I have to get up super early, I'm always super hungry, Right? makes me, my gremlin starts just like going crazy. If you're getting good quality, consistent sleep, consistent bedtime, consistent wake up, even on the weekends, as much as you can, creating a healthy sleep routine, a healthy sleep rhythm, your blood sugar will thank you. Your blood sugar will thank you. Now, so these are five things that you can do to control your blood sugar, to keep your insulin sensitive, not resistant. Do you know as much as one workout can increase your blood sugar sensitivity, your insulin sensitivity. It's fantastic. And losing 10% of your body weight has a massive impact on your insulin sensitivity. We all know that as a population, we are getting fatter. This is not a body shaming. This is a, this is a fact, okay? Excess weight like this is not good for us. This is why heart attack, stroke, type 2 diabetes are on the rise. The good thing is, is that you are in control. This is very exciting to me, okay? You don't need a prescription to eat consistent meals that are well-balanced with a healthy plate of carbs, protein, fats, and fiber to try and get better sleep, to prioritize sleep, and to move your body. You don't need a, you don't need a prescription pad for that. Okay. You don't need a prescription pad. You are in control. And this is all the stuff that I get into with my clients within Fatigue de Fabulous. I talk about this in detail. If they're having problems sleeping, I help them build a good sleep protocol. We talk about healthy plates. I help them, you know, plan out. Because if you were never taught this or you don't have the good habits established, it might be difficult for you to all of a sudden turn these things on or you're just not sure what to do or maybe you need help with your levels. That's why I can help you. That's why another coach can help you. But it's important. But you're still in control. You still just have to decide, oh, my gosh, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do this. This is important. It absolutely is important. Blood sugar management is critical to your overall health. And that's what I really had to talk about today. So let me check the comments real quick. Uh, Jeff. Hey, Michael. Michael, thanks. 100% right on target. I love it. Kathleen. Kathleen, girl, down 50 pounds. Way to go. I love it. And so that's what I had going on today. If you want to talk about this more, please send me a message. And if you've been kind of on the fence, uh, the first conversation is free. But what I will tell you is we are at August 24th. My program is a 90-day program, three months, September, October, November. You get out of that program. When my, my people leave the program, majority women, but I do have some men in there too. Um, when you leave that program, you've definitely lost weight. You've established some great habits. Your education levels are just overall health education is through the roof. And you also know about yourself. What foods are best for you? 
When is it best for you to eat? What do you like to eat? What food is serving your body? Right? These are important. Food isn't a naughty child. It's not either good or bad. It either serves your goals or it doesn't. And I help you figure that out. That's what we do inside Fatigue to Fabulous. So uh, this is a great time to get started. I would love to talk to you about it. And again, if you have any questions, concerns, always feel free to DM me. Tomorrow, we'll be back at the normal time, 12 p.m. EST. And uh, I appreciate those of you who joined for the one-off time today. Tomorrow will be episode 10, and I'm really excited about it. I'm going to share with you all a personal story about, um, about my recent scare uh, with skin cancer. And I'll be sharing that with you tomorrow. I'll also be talking about the sun, the good, the bad, the misinformation. Um, we'll be talking about health, you know, ways to make sure that you are healthy in the sun, ways to make sure that you can get the benefits of the sun, and also talk about maybe some scare tactics that have been out there. So that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. As always, please, if you like this post, please share it, repost it, repost it with your comments. Why is this a good episode? Why should people follow Jen? And if you haven't yet, go to my page, Shift Into Help. I'm still looking for those 150 followers so that I can broadcast stream directly to that business page too and just keep that page clean with just lives, right? Whereas my personal page, Jennifer Ockton, will have all my content. So again, thank you all so, so much. I will see you all tomorrow.